your skill set sells you like that will sell you you may find that sometimes you don't always meet the full requirements apply anyway welcome back to my channel for those of you that are new here welcome and yeah i'm back with another video which has been highly sought after so many people ask me how i transitioned from healthcare into tech so i did do a video on why i quit my healthcare job to go into tech but this video will be addressing how i actually made that transition so this is going to be i wouldn't say a lengthy video but i am going to try and cover as much as i can if you do have any more questions please leave them in the comments and yeah let's get right into this video so first things first how i transitioned from healthcare to a technical role i was fed up guys i was just fed up up. like I knew I wasn't progressing and I wasn't growing um how I would want to and at the pace that I wanted to more so that I got fed up within myself because I wasn't allowing myself to grow how I have consistently grown over the years so I just got fed up and I think bearing in mind guys as I said previously in my other video I did have some marketing experience whilst I ran my business so don't think that it was just out of thin air that I got this role I do think for the most part there is entry level roles that you can get off of no experience but my biggest advice would be to do courses guys that's my number one thing when you guys come on here you always hear me saying upskill 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 that is so important especially in like the marketing tech world you need to be upskilling all the time things are always changing things are always growing and yeah it's so important guys to consistently be willing to learn and i think that is the first thing i would say is once you are fed up of your situation so if you are fed up of your situation right now and you know i'm talking to you you need to be willing and ready to learn that I can't stress enough because you're going into an industry where you're going to consistently be learning so just be willing to start learning and in order to get to the new career or the new job you're after one of the requirements for the pivot would essentially be that you have to be ready and willing to learn but yeah guys I got fed up yeah I think for me it was more so not really moving as I said before I knew that being a doctor wasn't on the cards so the next step was to essentially just leave healthcare completely so yeah i just got fed up um in terms of like not really yeah progressing career and salary wise which um is something that i wanted and i wanted to say something to you guys as well was that never feel like guilty or like weird or awkward for like taking control of your career because that is very important and something that i don't think they really teach us in school per se it's more so go get a degree go get a job but there needs to be a level of particular mindset when it comes to trying to take ownership of your career because not everyone is brave or you know like that to take control or to take ownership of your career and if something is no longer serving you it's no bad blood or no hard feelings to whoever it is you're working under it's more so i've got to do this for myself and that's a mindset that you need to adopt for yourself and for this journey it's i'm doing what's best for me i'm putting my needs first and this no longer serves me anymore no hard feelings no bad blood but it's time for me to move on and to unlock a new level in my life. So look at it in that way to say, hey, you know, I rock with you. I maybe still even like, you know, your colleagues, your friends, your company, all of that stuff. But you also need to do what is best for you and what you know is right in your heart. So yeah, that is the advice that I wanted to just drop in there. So the second thing you want to do is you want to audit your current skill set and be honest. This is the point where you take full accountability. So what skills do you have? So if you're someone that's coming from like a clinical background, you will most likely have like a lot of clinical skills like first aid training. Maybe you've got some like basic life support. You've got maybe, you know, some Microsoft Office skills. Maybe you look, you know how to use outlook word these sorts of things but i kid you not guys i came from a clinical background so i'll be real when it comes to this is that you've got to develop your technical skills guys like, i'm not even gonna lie if you know you're someone that you don't use like excel you don't use certain programs like just i would say more technical stuff you want to get on udemy you want to get on coursera you want to get on a lot of these big platforms that teach courses you want to start 
learning guys audit your current skills and be real with yourself if you know the current skills you have is just like customer service answering calls admin kind of stuff don't get me wrong these skills are definitely skills that are useful but when it comes to like going into more technical roles and stuff like that you want skills that are as i said very technical and the reason why i'm saying this is because one of the next points I'm going to make, you're going to understand why I'm saying that you need to audit your current skills because you will essentially be selling yourself on just your skills alone. But you're going to understand why a bit later. But what I found with like when it comes to tech and moving into more of a technical role, your skill set sells you. Like that will sell you. And what you find is that companies and recruiters recognize softwares and programs and languages so things like sql tableau html css microsoft power bi google analytics do you know how to use these stuff ask yourself do you know how to use google analytics do you know and understand tableau i really want to make sense to you guys and i really want you guys to think about what i'm saying and i know i always throw these words at you guys but it's something I've had to learn. So don't think that I'm just saying it because I'm in it because I was still where you are now. And you sometimes don't look into these things because you're not at that level. For me, I was in a clinical role. So a lot of my skills were more practical as opposed to like technical. So what would I use pivot tables for? Like I wasn't processing a huge chunk of data, but these are things that I did previously in my spare time for my business. So I got to grips with these skills and was able to transfer this into my new career path so it's very important to be upskilling guys because you need to be able to do a skills audit before you even start applying for stuff go to potential jobs which i'm going to explain soon be real be honest don't try to like big yourself up <laughs> You know, even ask your colleague, like, what do you think our, our role entails so that you can get a second opinion? Because sometimes you might boost up your skills when really and truly your colleague can be like, no, we just do this, this, this and this. Do you get what I mean? So be real with yourself so that you're able to grow and develop because if you lie to yourself and exaggerate what you do, you won't be growing because you think that you know it all and it's important to really be real and be honest. As I said, I came from a clinical background so I had to be real with myself and yeah, get my head down so that I was up to scratch and up to standards for some of these roles because I also didn't study a marketing or business, economic, maths. So some people in my industry, they've had those degrees or a marketing degree, which I never had. but i did work with data in my degree and i also studied a stem degree so that definitely helped me um to make that pivot but again it's not always compulsory sometimes especially when you have the correct skill set so the third thing i've done some of you are probably going to be surprised but i changed my cv to one page my cv was i'm so embarrassed to tell you guys but it was three pages borderline going on for i changed everything like i literally cut the crap like <laughs> i cut the crap guys um yeah i changed it to one page and some of you are probably thinking oh my god but i've got x amount of experience and i've worked at these jobs and some of you you've been job happy like you've been hopping jobs but my biggest advice would be one page cv I actually did a one page CV on canva.com. So I use Canva, I will link it down below so you guys can also see um, the website that I use. But I use Canva to change my CV to one page. I remember when I was telling my sister and like people around me like, yeah, my CV's one page. Like people are thinking, oh my God, like you're crazy, how? Get straight to the point. Recruiters do not have time. Okay, some of you may have to have two page CVs, but in my case, I, yeah, I was able to cut it down to one page and I just literally cut out the faff, like I cut out the faff. Some employers don't even care what you've been doing when you were 16, like I'm not trying to be funny, but I don't care that what retail department you were working in or what shelves you were stacking at the age of 16. I want to know your most recent because even if I went back to these companies to get references, some of these companies, they probably won't even know or have you on their records. So I just said, yeah, I'm not going to even bother with those because most of the time, depending on which company that you work for, they will ask for like your most recent employers for a reference. And if anything, if you have had like, let's say a job from when you were like 16 
to maybe let's say 22 and it's been a job that you've been in for years then fine of course you're going to put that on your cv and get a reference because it's been your most recent but if you had like jobs when you were six yeah cut cut all the nonsense like guys one page cvs have been a game changer for me like since i've gone to one page cv i don't think i'll ever go back i don't see myself going back to a list of like a newspaper why they want straight to the point who are you what can you do what is your educational background what skills do you have what can you bring like literally one page is what you need to sell yourself like i've done it so since it's worked for me and i literally pivoted from another background healthcare into marketing i don't think i'll ever kind of go back because yeah it's worked so i'm not going back to my old layout especially the layer i used before was a microsoft like generic template and guys it's 2022 like canva exists <laughs> there's no reason why you should have a basic word cv like don't get me wrong you can do really cool templates on word but for me since i started using canva it's my go-to i use it for pretty much everything i do and yeah the one page cvs literally game changer absolute game changer so that is what i did i changed my cv guys to one page i literally sold myself one page when you now sell yourself on your previous title especially when you're pivoting sometimes these buzzwords may not come up on job searches when recruiters are doing a search so you want to have specific buzzwords and keywords in your title hence why i say even if you put a junior or a trainee before the job role so if you're trying to be a ux ui designer put junior or put trainee if you're upskilling and doing courses and you've never had work experience put trainee you're basically saying i'm training to be this thing and that is fine no one can't take that from you there's so many jobs when you go online go even to a job website now you will type in trainee there is so many roles that have trainee in front of them so don't ever feel bad for calling yourself a trainee because even if you have zero experience you're still training and learning to become this thing so i think that's just very important. my biggest key takeaway and i have done a video on this is the skills guys i will always say upskilling and skills Skills. keywords upskilling and skills it's all about skills guys what skill set do you have and that's what i said audit your current skill set what skills are you missing what skills do you need to gain everything is about skill 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 skills i'm going to embed it in your brain it's all about skills guys because your key skills is what's going to sell you if you're a pro at tableau and microsoft power bi if you're a pro at managing google and bing ads or you know facebook business manager you're able to optimize and scale and you know do really cool stuff that is what's going to sell you how much experience do you have optimizing and managing campaigns how much experience do you have visualizing data these are the things that sell you and makes you valuable to the employer because you know how to do things you're competent you've got this skill set not how much emails you reply back to not how much calls you picked up unless you're in like a sales role and you're working to kpis but as i said this is for people trying to get into more technical roles is what skills you're learning that's what's going to sell you what softwares have you mastered so i made sure that i went for specific titles so for example if you're trying to get into ppc marketing you are going to look for for example ppc executive roles if you're trying to get into seo you will look for seo executive roles if you're trying to get into social media management you will look for junior social media managing or social media managing assistant so if you're trying to enter through entry level which sometimes can be the easiest that's what you want to be looking for assistant junior trainee you know entry level even typing in the title and entry level so you could type in ux ui designer entry level so if you want to be a junior developer you could type in junior developer entry level when you now type in these things you'll be able to get the right job match where you're able to now go in and see the skills that they require you may find that sometimes you don't always meet the full requirements apply anyway that is my biggest advice apply anyway because you just never know and most jobs and roles they will train you obviously don't go in 
blinded and not knowing a thing because you need to understand what you're doing but make sure you understand and have working knowledge of most things that are in the job description i can't stress this enough i also wanted a hybrid slash fully remote role so i also typed in things like fully remote or hybrid model so since the pandemic, a lot of companies have gone into more of a hybrid model. So you go in maybe two, three days a week, some even one day a week, work from home the rest. So depending on what you want, again, if you're trying to pivot, beggars cannot be choosers. So please cut your coat according to your size. So don't be trying to secure too many remote roles because you might limit your pool. Maybe just settle for a hybrid role and then once you're upskilled and you know what you're doing, then you can be a bit more choosy to go for fully remote roles. And since the pandemic, I think some companies have gone back, depending on the restrictions, have gone back to hybrid or back into the office. But if you're someone that you don't mind, this is not relevant. But if you're looking for more of a hybrid, flexi working, which I find with tech, there is a lot of flexible working. One of the reasons why I went into tech. Um, yeah, so look for the flexible working. You can type it in or put remote WFH, work from home. There's usually buzzwords where it will come up anyway. So yeah, you would find a lot of tech roles can be hybrid or remote. So if that's something you require, I would always say type it in so you can get first dibs um, for the preference that you actually want. But again, as I said, if you're trying to pivot, beggars cannot be choosing. And in my particular experience, I knew I wanted to work for an agency. I wanted to get agency experience first before I went in-house so agencies more I work with different clients whereas in-house it could be working for like a big brand and I just focus on their PPC marketing for just their particular product so I knew I wanted to be agency so I did prioritize looking for for example agencies again if you're like a UX UI designer I know there's agencies and then there's in-house as well same thing you can prioritize maybe working for an agency um, to get more um, experience working with a different set of clients and having just you know more experience so this is definitely something to consider and what I do advise so to you guys different companies use different titles I've seen junior graphic designers doing UX design work so I've also seen digital marketing roles that involves heavy PPC so I don't tend to look at titles too much but i knew i wanted to go into ppc so i did prioritize ppc which leads me on to my next point you need to be setting email reminders so that you can be applying consistently i tend to use indeed indeed is one of my favorites i think most roles i've ever got has been through indeed i tend to set daily reminders so you get emails to your inbox every day every day guys there's new job every single day i guarantee you because recruitment's not easy guys you need to remember this and for some people they may get um a role somewhere else or they may get something through linkedin so it's not consistent even i've gone through interview processes where i've been interviewing with multiple companies and i've withdrawn my application from a particular company and this is very common with candidates so don't think because a job has advertised or the post has expired that are oh, there's nothing left or i really wanted this company i've seen companies where the job has expired because maybe i saved it and i didn't get around to doing the application and it's come back again because maybe the candidate withdrew or maybe they even recruited the person but the person left guys remember that some companies have a probational period so some people leave during that probational period meaning that they may have to recruit for that role again so bear all these things in mind and don't just give up hope and think oh it's been a month it took me guys three months to do from the interviewing to accepting an offer so in hindsight 90 days i don't think that's a long time to pivot a whole career you need to be patient and you need to be consistent because that's something that I was. When you see roles, it's something that you like, something that you know you want to do, apply. Spend the time. If it means you have to go to the company website, which tends to happen, go on the company website and apply. Don't be lazy and be like, oh, I'm going to do this later because, guys, if you really want it, trust me, you'll put in the work. You just need to dedicate the time. And I also found that when you're applying for like the same role and you know what job you want to do and what industry or title you're going for you just apply for the same thing with the same cv so same cv same cover letter just apply it's so much easier to be consistent that's why sometimes i always say dabble first and then specialize what do you want to do because then it's so much easier when you're applying you're so much more consistent and the time frame on when your turnover is from when you're applying interviewing to actually accepting it's much quicker there's a quicker turnaround 
I dabbled as I said before so I knew exactly what I wanted to do I knew the exact title and that's what I went for and that's what I ended up getting in a 90 day span so I know there has been people who have said that it's taken them a longer time some people it's taken them over six months to like a year even 80 months to transition so be very specific with what you want because that will help you so much when it comes to staying consistent as well you need to allocate time you can't say that you want to leave your current situation you want to leave your current job but you're not actually setting the time and being consistent because trust me you'll find that it will be a year that's gone past and you'll still be in the same position so make sure you find the time make sure you set the time aside even if it's on your phone or if you're on the go if you've got like an iphone save your cv and stuff to your files and if you've got like another phone device make sure you're constantly on the go with your cv and stuff because even when job recruiters and stuff they call you sometimes you might just want to have your cv handy because maybe like you've changed the layout so you want to just remember like okay where, where things are always keep your cv and stuff handy with you it can also be ready just in case an employer calls you and i also tend to have like mock interview questions which i keep in my iphone notes and i just have mock interview questions just in case they put me on the spot and they want to do a telephone interview on the spot most companies i found they did schedule telephone interviews some of them it could have been last minute but make sure you have like mock interviews for the role that you're going for so that when they call you you're ready on the spot and i do find that since the pandemic a lot of interviews tend to be remote so for a lot of interviews that i had was very much remote i don't think i no i don't think i did go into any interview so with the tech world you'd also find that people like to be efficient and they like to do stuff remotely um some did i think one company did actually ask for me to go in but i didn't end up going for that company but some may do a remote interview initially and they may ask you to come in face to face but i think for the most part it was remote since the pandemic a lot of things have been done remotely so i think it does put you a bit more at ease when it comes to just getting into that interview spirit but when you start especially if you haven't had interviews for a long time once you start trust me you will just keep going and you get more confident with time i remember my first one i am going to do another video on how to be confident in interviews and things like that but i remember my first interview i hadn't had an interview in so long guys and yeah i was just so nervous and once you have that first initial interview then you have your second and you just keep the ball rolling this is why i say it's important to be consistent because then you start to kind of know what they're going to ask you you become more confident it's almost just like a natural thing and it does start to come more natural because it's something you're doing on a consistent basis and i will do another video on um how to be more confident and to prepare for like interviews and things like that but yeah guys i think that is pretty much all my tips that i've shared with you in terms of how to transition um if you do have any more questions or you want me to answer more things from you just leave a comment down below make sure you like this video please share it with your friends and family help a brother or sister out and yeah guys if you're not subscribed make sure you are subscribed and i will see you in my next video bye